Hello, hello, we are back in beautiful St. Bernard Parish here at the Los Isleños Museum Complex in St. Bernard, Louisiana. And we're preparing for a big fiesta coming up. So the Los Isleños Complex was set here to remember and to display and to talk about and to portray the Los Isleños people who came from the Canary Islands during the rule of Spain and Louisiana. They came here to Louisiana, colonized, and made a way on the bayou. And this museum complex and the festival that celebrates it is all in remembrance of those people who are my ancestors and a lot of the folks here today. So I'm excited, we're here all together. They're prepping for the fiesta. We're gonna go, we're gonna cook, we're gonna learn a little bit about the history of the Isleños people who are very similar to something you may have heard of before, the Cajuns. It's a very similar history, but the Cajuns came from France the Isleños came from Spain, and like I said, they learned to make a way on the bayous, in the wetlands, and it's a big part of our culture. So we want you to learn as much as you can about it in this video. Christopher Columbus in 1492 set the precedent of making his last land stop before quote unquote discovering the Americas in 1492 in the Canary Islands. So from that time forward, the Canary Islands became the gateway of the Spanish Empire to the New World. So when we became Spanish, the precedent was already exceedingly well established to use Canary Islanders to colonize. And Louisiana was a new colony of Spain in the 1770s. So Spain knew that Great Britain, 50 years before the Battle of New Orleans, was planning to capture New Orleans and control access to the Mississippi Valley. So that's why Canary Islanders were brought to Louisiana. Almost 3,000 were recruited to come here. They weren't forced to come here. They were recruited to come here. They, were, they joined the Regiment of Louisiana and they were first farmers. And they did fight the American Revolution under Governor Galvis. And then when the British invaded in 1814, where did they invade? Through one of the four Canary Island settlements. So the intelligence that Spain had, the wisdom that she had, all was proven to be accurate. But it happened when her colonists and their descendants were no longer subjects of the King of Spain, but citizens of the United States. It's a great irony. After the Civil War, next big catastrophe. Sugar economy is destroyed. So then the people who had been working on the plantations lost that income. And that's when they retreated to Delacroix Island, Shell Beach, all of these areas and the easternmost reaches of the parish then became very densely inhabited because that's when the people learned from the Catalans, the Isleños learned from the Catalans and the Filipinos about fishing, they were already trapping, moss gathering was very important, and professional hunting. I remember Alic Nunez telling me as a little boy in Spanish that uh, seafood and game from St. Bernard made the Orleans cuisine famous. They were very proud of that. All right, so that festival is coming up soon. It's almost always the first weekend in March. So if you miss it this year, definitely stay tuned. Go follow the Visit St. Bernard Facebook page and you'll be able to keep up with all the happenings in St. Bernard, especially Los Asleños Fiesta. All right, this here is the Coconut Island Bar Room. During the fiesta, this is going to be set up as a tapas bar. They're going to be serving all different types of Spanish tapas, Spanish wine, so this is all the original Cypress. There it is right there. Original coconut, ball. coconut Island Ballroom built in 1920. Aquí tenemos chorizo, queso, banana y manzanas. Todo está bueno. Muy bueno. Muy bueno. Sí. Y eso que se llama una tapa allá en, en la barra de... en la isla Canaria. Y dan eso cuando estás tomando. All right, I'm going to attempt to translate based on what I think I heard. This will be set up as the tapas bar. Um, I don't know exactly everything they're gonna serve. I'm gonna let Miss Kathy tell us what goes on in the tapas bar for the fiesta. Okay, well, um, pretty much 
it's going to be what we see here. Mm -hmm. um, instead of apples and oranges, it will be grapes. Okay. And um, of course, the different wines that we're going to have, um, some like this and many others. And also our um, great sangria that's homemade. Uh oh. Now, Tio, can you tell us the significance of a tapas? What is tapas? Is that something they do in the Canaries? Or right. In the and the Can well, they used to do it in Spain also. But it, uh, what they call tapas, you would go out and drink at a bar in Spain, and uh, they would serve little snacks like this here and all that. But they would have their drink, and they would put like the bread. She said, serve bread like French bread. They would take the bread and put it over the glass of wine or whatever they were drinking, mostly wine, put it over wine so the flies won't get in. So then they call that tapas. Tapa means cover on the, on the, on the glass. All right, and I think we got some Canary Island wine here, huh, Kenny? Yes, sir. All right, what we got? Tell us what we got. Well, we've got here um, an Autos de La Jolla. Uh, this is uh, an olive, Olivares Bodegas. So I'm not sure where this is uh, from a, Santa Ana. So this is a Spanish wine here. We then have this is actually from the Canaries. This is uh, from Lanzarote, which is a sparkling wine. And then here is a, uh, I guess like a champagne, uh, Casadora. And we're going to serve this at the festival. This will, when you come to the to the bar, they'll have this. Yes. Yes. There'll be there'll be several Spanish wines, right, 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 um, right. and we always try to get some Canarian wine. And right, let's try the Canarian wine. You got that from Nick? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. From uncorked. All right. So this is the sparkling wine from the Canary Islands. From the island of Lanzarote. From the island of Lanzarote. Islas, la, 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 I like it. It's good. It would probably be better chilled, huh? Do they serve it chilled? Well, they don't drink anything cold over there, do they? Yeah. Everything room temperature. Yeah. All right, so this is a Spanish wine. That one's good, too. That one's really good. I like that one. To be precise, Humilla, red wine, product of Spain. So All right. that's, I guess, this is like the champagne, champagne, the sparkling wines. Bubbly. That, that <laughs> one's very good. That one I could see. I know one of y'all is going to be hanging in here drinking this stuff, <laughs> eating these tapas. So come see them at this Leños Fiesta coming up real soon. My name is Don Mellorine, and today I'm cooking caldo. So what essentially is a caldo? Uh, caldo is a Spanish soup. It starts off with pickled pork meat. It has all the vegetables in it. It has potatoes. It has navy beans. It has uh, lima beans, green beans, cabbage. Was this your mom's pot? I see her yeah. name. Yeah. This is my mother's Lucinda Mallorine. And uh, that's I, her pot. That's her pot. I always use her pot. And I fill my pot up about a third of the way with water. I use regular tap water for good quality pickled meat. So what exactly is pickled meat? Pickled meat is a pork meat that was uh, preserved in salt. People use it for their beans, for caldo, different soups, vegetable soups. All right, one of the ingredients is a tomato paste. And, uh, tomato paste in there and the next thing I'm going to add is the navy beans. Now I pre-cooked these because they take a long time to cook. So these are navy beans, uh, sometimes they call them peas. I'm going to put those in now. The thing I'm going to add, I'm going to add some of the sweet potatoes and the Irish, the white potatoes. Next thing we're going to, we're going to add our corn on the cob to the pot. Frozen, I call it loose corn. It's corn that's not on the cob. We're gonna put a couple bags of that in there. Put in about a two pound bag of lime. Put 
What you got there? Turnip tops. And uh, I'm gonna put some green beans. Put the uh, green beans in kind of toward the end because they don't take as long to cook as the other things. Last thing I add is the cabbage. I'm gonna put that in because the cabbage doesn't take very long to cook. And we're gonna add all this cabbage in now and just let it all cook down till the potatoes and, and the meat gets soft. All right, let's see what we got. All done, ready to go. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all, the caldo is finally done. Man, I can't wait for that fiesta. I hope y'all do come visit us here in St. Bernard. Come to the Los Islanos fiesta. Let's see how that pickled meat is. Mr. Don, that is phenomenal, buddy. Doing good. Phenomenal. Passed down from generation, generation, generation. Slightly altered each time, but this definitely has its roots in the Canary Islands now here in louisiana come see us if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe to the channel like the video leave me a comment what else would you like to know about the Islenos, their culture their heritage and i hope we see you at the fiesta